Today we'll be looking at how is the internet conscious? If it were, how would we know? If you're new to this channel, welcome! This is Mr. Singularity, where we explore the scientific and technological breakthroughs shaping the future as we know it. Your query calls to mind Bulk's third law. If you think the internet is awful right now, only wait a little bit. Signing on already offers a constant megadose of hysteria with mass surveillance, deep fakes, and first posting. Imagine the day that this colony of horrors becomes organized, deliberate, and self-conscious. I'm not doing this to scare you, but to indicate that the possibility of an aware internet isn't always debated. The knowledge error, if that's really what we're in, continually tells us the many dystopian possibilities that threaten us. Floods, drought, red monsters, grey goo. I don't believe people have the bandwidth, so to speak, to take on another existential threat. But since you seem to have a higher than average threshold for psychological torture, I'm going to do my best to react frankly. Consciousness, of course, is notoriously impossible to pin down. You can't calculate where you'll keep it in your palm. You can observe it in yourself, but not in others. This is not a scientific dilemma, nor is it a new one. Christ appeared to detect the slipperiness of his own mind as he said to his followers. You can recognize them by their fruits, implying, basically, that the best way to ascertain the condition of the soul, of another human, is via its visible manifestation, actions. Philosophy and artificial intelligence appear to circumnavigate the dilemma, with most minds in a common way. Alan Turing built his famed criterion for machine intelligence, the Turing exam, on the premise that the mind was a black box. If a machine may persuade us, by its behavior, that it has no knowledge at the human level, we may conclude that it does. So maybe we could reformulate your question. Should the internet function like an entity with an inner life? Will this manifest the fruits of consciousness? There are definitely occasions that it feels. Google will predict what you're about to type until you completely express it to yourself. Facebook advertisements may indicate that a woman is pregnant before she tells her own family and friends. At some instances, it is convenient to believe that you are in the company of another mind. Though, considering the human propensity to anthropomorphize, we should be cautious about fast assumptions. Some of the most compelling proof for the awareness of the internet can be challenging to interpret, since we ourselves will be the nodes and nerves that make up the brain. For certain social scientists, the several political revolutions that emerged in social networks count as emergent behavior, a phenomenon that can be traced to any person but belongs to the mechanism as a whole. Two French cognitive psychologists have gone so far as to say that the Egyptian revolt and the Arab Spring are proof of the virtual collective consciousness, defined as private awareness held by a multitude of individuals. I don't believe you're going to find this very persuasive, nor should you. If we talk of awareness, we generally mean something more coherent. The single stream of mental experience, the ego, the self, that may appear to be more than the sum of all Twitter messages. After all, you wandered for self-awareness. Some really clever thinkers suggested, of course, that our own self-awareness is an illusion. The intuition that we are, as 007 once put it, a unit, not a village, is not really confirmed by the brain design, with its billions of small, unconscious pieces. But such dismissals of subjectivity are not quite enlightening or precise. If the united mind is nothing more than an artifact, where does the perception come from, and how can we know if there are any other things? If it occurs, one of the more compelling instances of internet awareness comes from the philosophy of mind that has been built to account for exactly this kind of coherent perception. Integrated knowledge theory, guided by Christoph Koch and Gialli Tononi, claims that awareness emerges through dynamic associations through various regions of the brain. It's enticing to go wild with this logic. Are Twitter crowds an instant of the rage of the internet? Is misinformation a trend towards self-delusion? Is the dark network unconscious? Yet I will suggest that we can take his hypothesis literally, if only because it has even more troubling consequences. Koch assumes that at every moment minimally interconnected processes, atoms and neurons, are part of a more heavily organized brain structure. The awareness of these smaller structures is eaten up and absorbed into the greater structure. You may be able to guess where this is headed. As the philosopher Philip Goff pointed out, if the hypothesis of Koch and Tonini are right, then at some point the increasing accessibility and sophistication of the internet would cause all individual brains to become integrated into the common consciousness. Brains will cease to be self-conscious, Goff states, and instead become mere cogs in the mega-conscious entity that is civilization, including its internet-based networking. I would agree with you that there is a shortage of dialogue on this issue. The Future of Civilization Institute, which is committed to evaluating existential danger, has not said anything regarding the sentient network. 
Even billionaires who are fond of speculating about the speeding AI will still seem oblivious to the idea that the internet could zombie the whole human race. It might be possible that such an uprising is impossible, but so was the likelihood that the massive Hadron Collider might create a black hole that would vacuum up the universe, and CERN invited a group of independent scientists to evaluate that. I can only conclude that silence is ideological at its root, or maybe even metaphysical. The idea of artificial intelligence, in both its positive and negative ways, has long mirrored the concept of Judeo-Christian creation, believing that if and when computer consciousness is formed, it would be designed in our own image as gladly and purposefully as Yahweh sculpted Adam out of clay. There is a distinctly pagan probability that consciousness could inadvertently arise from our communication networks, as the ancient Athenians unexpectedly arose from the dust. Brave individuals like yourself who have dared to suggest those things have always been mocked as cranks and mocked as heretics. In certain instances, literally, Pierre Thielhard de Chardin, a French Jesuit priest who published about aware networks in the 1940s and 50s, had his dissertation barred from the Vatican. In The Future of Man, Telhard stated that all computers in the planet will one day be linked to a large global network, an uncanny view of the internet. As human awareness becomes gradually synthesized, he said, it would ultimately converge into an etherized universal consciousness that would enable our minds to join with the Holy Spirit, to understand the kingdom of heaven that Christ had promised. Telhard's prophecy poses a useful question. Why should the convergence of both minds be anything to fear? Almost all large theological movements promote disciplines that are intended to dissolve human consciousness. The selflessness of Christian suicide, the glorified nothing of the Buddhist soul falling into nirvana. We could want to see this coming amalgamation not as the death of our race, but as its greatest spiritual achievement, one that can be automated like so many routine modern jobs. When asked if we realize when the internet becomes informed, Koch answered that the best indication will be when it demonstrates autonomous conduct. It's hard to picture what this would look like, although given that this phase would often entail the deterioration of human awareness, you may be gazing internally at the state of your own psyche. The early phases of this are likely to be slow. You might feel a little confused, your focus diverted in several directions, such that you begin to believe that the theorists are right, that the single self is an illusion. You can sometimes submit to the idea that everyone you meet sounds the same, as if their individual minds, mediated into the common vocabulary of tweets and memes, had merged into a single speech. You find yourself involved in conduct that is not of your own benefit, mechanically pursuing the dictates of exchanging and disseminating personal details, even when you realise that the true winner is not you or your mates, but the mechanism itself. The great convergence, and when it arrives, could feel, and I confess I find this most likely, like nothing at all. There will be no earthquake, no divine bell, only the mysterious calm that is known to overwhelm visitors standing in Times Square or heading along the Las Vegas Strip, a concession of overstimulation that is not unlike the numbness that sets in after hours of scrolling and clicking. In those times, the noise is so absolute that it becomes distinct from the quiet, yet even there, in the middle of the crowd, it is possible to feel sacred isolation, as though you are standing alone in the centre of a great cathedral. Human brains tend to be strongly interconnected which is why we view the environment and our mind in a consistent manner. But in his book, The Sensation of Existence Itself, Koch claims that consciousness is a spectrum stretching down the chain of being. Ravens, jellyfish, bees, maybe even atoms and quarks have sufficiently converged to merit a tiny burst of awareness. It may sound like it's bacterium. Koch argues that the same criterion can extend to machines. Although he's dubious that the individual machines may grow brains, the internet seems to fulfill his knowledge requirements. Its 10 billion machines, each consisting billions of transistors, are connected around the globe to extremely complex webs. When asked in a 2013 interview with this publication if the world was aware of it, Koch provided that it's impossible to tell for sure, considering that not all machines are linked at the same time. But indeed, according to his hypothesis, it sounds like anything to be the world, or one day. I should emphasize that Koch is not a crackpot, but a chief scientist at the Allen Center for Brain Research and generally known as one of the leading figures in theoretical neuroscience. Nor is it speaking of a consciousness in the grim. Modern age, a context that implies almost something and none, see moral consciousness or societal consciousness, Koch indicated that the consciousness of the internet might be complex enough to feel discomfort or even to suffer mood changes. Depending on the exact condition of the transistors, he said to the Atlantic, it can sound depressed one day and joyful the next or whatever the equivalent is in an internet room. If you made it this far in the video, thank you and welcome to the end of the video club. 
What's your take on this? Let me know down in the comments below and check out one of these other videos. This has been Mr. Singularity and I'll see you on the next one.